I want to see if they've applied the microcode update for the issues that 13th and 14th gen Intel processors were having. I think this is going to be one of the biggest things, whether or not they pass or fail, because lifetime labor warranty. I thought that in the other section, three years for labor versus lifetime labor. I feel like there's a contradiction there. In this box is a PC from a company called NextGen OEM. I'd never heard of them until they reached out to me asking if I'd like to review one of their PCs. And that's partially because they're a relatively newer system integrator. They started out as a retail and wholesale business that sold PCs, laptops, and accessories from some of the big names like Dell, HP, Lenovo, and then transitioned into pre-built gaming computers about a year ago. I wanted to review this because one, I like computers. Whether they're built by me or somebody else, I enjoy them all the same. I've never been an elitist when it comes to pre-builds. I think they're a good way for people to get into the PC gaming space and then over time transition into doing their own upgrades and eventually, hopefully, getting comfortable enough to build one from scratch. And two, I'm kind of curious to see what a newcomer to the space has to offer. There's no shortage of companies to buy pre-builds from and more competition hopefully means more competitive pricing and raising the bar in customer service if a company wants to stay afloat. So my hope is that this video will help anyone who may have come across Next Gen OEM while looking for a pre-build and were wondering if their systems are worth it or not. And for transparency, this video is not sponsored by them. All opinions are my own and I was given no script or talking points and they do not get to see this video before it is released. So yeah, let's open this up and check it out. All right, so first things first, the packaging. This is a plain outer box. This is good because you don't wanna advertise if this is being shipped to your house and sitting on your front door or porch or whatever for however long. You don't wanna advertise that there might be a multi-thousand dollar computer in here. So it is plain packaging and we do have fragile stickers on all four sides. So that's good to see. Whether or not these fragile stickers do anything when the delivery workers see it uh, is one thing, but at least they put the effort to put these on there. We are greeted with a little thank you card. We'll take a look at their website and their business and how they sell and things uh, in a bit, but uh, yeah, so this is just a little thank you card. All right, so we've got bubble wrap. There's more bubble wrap. Wedge down here as well. Yeah, so we've got bubble wrap on all sides. Secondary box on the inside, so it's double box for more protection, so we always love to see that. My mic was just pushed up against my skin, so that first portion of the video might sound crappy. I apologize for that. I'm just gonna put it up here just to make it simpler from here on out. All right, let's get this interior box out. And we do have the box that the case for this build uh, came in. I'll put the specs of this build on the screen, but this is an i7 13700KF RTX 4070, uh, 32 gigabytes of memory, one terabyte SSD. This build goes for $2,000 on their website. And I'll discuss pricing and value and all of that later on once we get to that portion of the video. But right now we are looking at the unboxing experience. Extra stuff like the SATA cable from the motherboard box, the Wi-Fi antenna, and the, the power cord. Yeah, pretty thorough job with the packaging. Let me zoom in on this. Uh, it's probably still a little bit hard to see, but yeah, depending on the case that you have, it shows you how to remove the panel. Pretty sure you just pull out and it pops. Yep. So they did use expanding foam in here and it tells you to remove it carefully and gently so that you're not moving parts around or bending them or ripping them out of their sockets, so. plug into the graphics card and not the motherboard when it comes to display. So that's good to see because a lot of beginners, people who would be buying pre-built, uh, this is more common of a problem than you would think if you're a veteran 
uh, PC user, but as well as connecting things like the keyboard, mouse, uh, Wi-Fi antennas, things like that. So this is pretty nice to see. Uh, I think this is kind of standard from a lot of the pre-builds that I've seen. Uh, so yeah, we'll put that to the side. I think we should be good with being able to operate this computer, but let's actually take a physical look at it and how it arrived. I'm gonna actually take this camera off the top now so I can get a closer look. All right, so I'm just taking a quick look through here to make sure everything is still slotted. Nothing came loose during transportation. Okay. Yeah, so that looks all good. For this line of system specifically, it has that cute cat aesthetic going on with the kind of vibrant colors. And they did a pretty good job uh, color matching all the parts. I'm gonna get B-roll after the fact and then overlay it here without me like modifying anything just to show a better angle and lighting. Looking at the fan configuration, what do we got here? We have intake from the side as well as from the bottom coming up and then exhaust in the back as well as the top through the 360 radiator. Nothing looks out of place. So let's swap it around to the back and take off the side panel. So looking at the back, they did a pretty good job on the cable management. They have a lot of things zip tied down to different tie down points and they've tucked in anything extra down here. So this is a fully modular power supply and these are the stock cables that comes with it. And this is all the extra stuff, SATA connectors, Molex, stuff that's not really used, but they've connected it and put it in the system. So, uh, I mean, it looks clean enough of a cable management job. No real complaints there. I think so long as it's not a complete rat's nest, I'll give like a pass and fail grade. And I would say this, this definitely passes. All right, let me get this closed up so that we can power it on. And the moment of truth. All right, the system is powering on and we've got all the LEDs lighting up. Oh, BIOS. I wanted to get into the BIOS before in the windows. Dang it. No weird sounds coming from the fans. No weird pump noises or gurgling from the AIO. Looks good and sounds good so far. All right, we are in Windows. So we are gonna go to the BIOS, but since it just freshly uh, got into the OS, I wanted to note something. So Gigabyte Control Center is asking if I wanna install. Let me take a look on the programs list, add remove program. Uh, we do have NVIDIA control panel, so it looks like there is some form of drivers there. Uh, and the Gigabyte control center is not there. People complain about, you know, all that, like ASRock, ASUS, Gigabyte, all their uh, control centers. This could be seen as good or bad, so just noting it, but it could go either way. It's not a pro or a con that Gigabyte control center was not pre-installed on the system. Everything looks pretty much uh, like stock windows in here. I'm not seeing anything extra, so that's good. Uh, let me look at NVIDIA control panel and take a look at the drivers. We're looking at driver version 560.70, 560.70. So that was July, so from a few months ago. Yeah, so when this was sent, uh, there was definitely newer driver versions than this. So it does look like uh, because they gave the completely fresh out-of-box experience, um, they did not put the latest drivers, which you might not have the latest game ready drivers that might have some more optimization for specific titles that have been released. But something like this shouldn't be an issue and you can always update it yourself. They're still gonna work. Some people don't ever update their drivers unless something goes wrong, but having old drivers by a couple of months is not a big deal. But now I really do wanna get into the BIOS because this is a 13th gen Intel system. I wanna see if they've applied the microcode update uh, and updated the BIOS for the issues that 13th and 14th gen Intel processors were having. So let's take a look at that. I think this is gonna be one of the biggest things, whether or not they pass or fail. So microcode 129, I believe that is the one for the instability fixes. Let me take a look real quick. Intel's microcode 0x129 for all motherboards for 13th and 14th gen CPUs is out now. Okay, two months ago. 
Yeah, so this is the update that I was looking for. We're good there and just taking a look at the rest of the stuff that you would hope they enable. Uh, so here's the base uh, DDR5 RAM frequencies, but they do have the XMP enabled. Resizable bar is not enabled, however. And I mean, I can see it going either way. There are some use cases where enabling this uh, has shown to have a slight decrease in performance, but I think on average, it is a small increase in performance. I usually enable it myself. It's not enabled here. Whether or not it's a big deal to you or not, I'm just pointing it out. Uh, it is just a flick of a switch just like that, but I'm gonna leave it off uh, because that's how it was. Uh, so yeah, I'm okay with the BIOS. The biggest thing was that uh, microcode update just for you know the customers who don't know about the issues so that uh, they are protected from their PCs damaging themselves and then having to go through the hassle of returns and being without their PC and things like that. All right, so I wanna do a couple of things. I want to stress test the system and also check it against like a demanding game. For the stress test, I wanna see if, you know, with their workmanship, everything installed, it can run a demanding workload that basically stresses out all the components to the max load and the system is fine both temperature wise and stability wise. So it doesn't crash or gives any apparent issues. So I've got a few programs here. The first one being Prime95, a classic, but a good one. Uh, so we're gonna do small FFTs for testing out all L1, 2, and 3 caches and max power, heat, and CPU stress. For a mark here, uh, this is the updated for Mark for Mark Two. That's gonna stress the graphics card specifically. And then I do have Ida, 64 to stress the system memory, the RAM. So we are testing all the core components in here and this is gonna be a pretty overkill, like day-to-day -day uses for wh whatever you're gonna be doing. It is not gonna stress your system to this degree, but you know, we go overboard just to make sure if it's good for that, it should be good for pretty much anything you throw at it. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get this test started. I also have hardware info here, which is gonna give us all the information we need as to you know what's going on with the system. So we have uh, CPU, GPU utilization, temperatures. So we can see, for example, here, core usage, 100% on all the threads. Uh, we've got, let's see, yeah, CPU is running pegged at 100%. We've got the temperatures. Where is the thermal throttling? Yeah, so if there's any throttling going on, this is gonna flag it. And then down here, we have the graphics card. So we've got the same thing as the CPU, temperatures, multiple temperature sensors. Uh, we've got the clocks, the load, all of that. There's a little clock down here. I'm gonna click that and it is gonna go for, I'm gonna let it run for about an hour or so. Uh, I'm gonna do a longer stress test, but for the sake of right now of the unboxing experience, I do wanna do a quicker one so I can then jump into games and look at what the temperatures are like there. And then there's more stuff that I do wanna talk about like the pricing of this system and take a look at their website. And while I'm doing those things, I can run a longer stress test in the background. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna let this run for about an hour or so and then come back and we'll take a look uh, and then move on. All right, so the test has actually been running for well over two hours now. I got pulled away for a little bit and um, yeah, did not get to stop it at all. And I did wanna have it live running when I did start recording again. But we can take a look at the time and on hardware info, since I last pressed the reset, it is has been running for two hours and 14 minutes as well as if we go to IDA64 and I don't know why it became so tiny. I think it's because the Furmark, for whatever reason interacted with it because the Furmark set to 4K. For some reason, the resolution here got weird, but for hardware info, it did not. But anyways, uh, we zoom in. Yeah, so uh, IDA has been running for uh, over two hours as well. I started it sooner, so the clock uh, has a couple more minutes on it. And then Prime95 is still running. Uh, the torture test so we can go over and look at hardware info actually so this has minimum maximum and average columns and uh, pretty much since I press the reset for the whole two plus hour duration everything has been loaded up to 100% see the average here is not 99.9 .9. it has been fully under load this entire time 
being torture tested. Doing a stress test like this is pretty important when you either first buy a system like this, whether it be from next gen OEM or from a different company, or even if you built your own PC, you should do a stress test like this because for one, you wanna identify any potential problems with hardware. Parts themselves can come with defects and issues that may not be apparent until they're under heavier load. I put it through its paces and it passed. No throttling, no crazy temperatures, uh, no crashing, none of that. But yeah, I I'm okay with the stress test. It, it passed with flying colors. What I'm gonna do now is I need to install Steam. I just wanna show a little bit of gameplay just to see what you would expect from a system like this. All right, so I'm loaded into Throne and Liberty now, which is a decently hard game to run and it's really new. Very pretty graphics this is Unreal Engine 4. Uh, the draw distance on the like landscape and terrain on this game is crazy. And the CPU, because there's so many cores and threads, usually games don't fully utilize them. So uh, you, for especially i7s and i9s with the higher core and thread counts, uh, you're typically floating around like 30 to 40%. Uh, there are some games that use it, but most don't. Uh, and then for the graphics card, depending on what I'm showing on the scene, it's it's going from like 80 to almost 100%. But yeah, this game is gorgeous. So looking at the FPS, even though we are like above 100, uh, I'm not focused as much on that as I am with the, the temperatures that we're seeing while gaming. So we are below 70 on both, below 60 on the RTX 4070 and below 70 on the 13700KF. Yeah, we've got a lot of buildings. We've got a lot of players and NPCs. Got the castle right there. Here we get a little bit more of a balance. The, the graphics card is running at a lower load in the 60 to 70% range. And because of that, it's running cooler. But now the CPU, I guess with all of the different uh, NPCs and other players around, uh, we're getting closer to almost like 50% on the CPU load and the temperatures have gone up, but it's still in like the low to mid 60s. Um, but yeah, so this is Throne Liberty. Let's let's throw on another game. Let's throw on Cyberpunk since I bet some of you are probably bored of this and don't care about MMOs. So let's do a more mainstream game that is known to be difficult to run. All right, so we're in Cyberpunk now and the settings I have are essentially, it says custom because I changed the DLSS to quality, but pretty much I maxed out uh, Ray Tracing Ultra, but that by default gives it DLSS to auto and I wanted quality just to make sure uh, the Cyberpunk kind of needs uh, DLSS just to run good, especially with ray tracing, um, even on newer graphics cards like the RTX 4070. But this is pretty much maxed out ray tracing with DLSS to help it out. And the GPU is pegged like 99%, high 90s essentially, so pretty much at max load. And I added the fans information in here from hardware info, so we do see GPU and the, the fan headers from the motherboard. So for the graphics card, I mean, at max load, let me see, we're at like mid 50 degrees, fans are running at about like 35%. Looking at the CPU, we do get a little bit more CPU load than in Throne in Liberty. So about 50% uh, pretty consistently. And for all the speeds there, the one that's 2700 RPM must be the pump. I think the, the case fans are the lower one at around 800 RPM. And then the mobile fans that says 1500 RPM, that's, uh, that must be the three fans that are attached to the AIO trying to, you know, push that air through the radiator. So I'm pretty much good on the games. There's a bunch of different titles that you can test on, but again, I'm not trying to look at like the specific performance per games. The 13700KF and the 4070 are going to perform how they perform. Um, I'm just looking for, you know, passing stability tests, uh, making sure temperatures aren't out of whack. Uh, there's no apparent issues with gaming, which across two heavy titles that I have just shown so far, you know, it's not like it was stuttering, there's no artifacting, no issues like that. So I think I'm good with this portion of it. So I'm gonna go back to doing a longer stress test and I'll probably show some footage on the screen uh, just to show like the long duration to show that I think the system's gonna do well, uh, but we can go over and start looking at their website and start talking about pricing. This is a pretty clean looking website. Uh, they've got their builds and they do have an exclusive partnership with Segotep, so um, that's why they're using so many Segotep parts when it comes to like power supply, the 
cooler with computer case any extra case fans keep on going down and they have a bunch of different sections new arrivals gaming series uh you know pretty much what you'd expect from a uh, system integrator website like this so let's take a look at their warranty real quick shall be free of defect and material and workmanship for three years for labor and one for parts which is pretty standard in uh quite a few companies that i've checked out if within 20 days of delivery you receive an item that's defective or determine that we made an error they'll gladly offer a refund for the item price additionally we have a special one-to-one -one exchange warranty to ensure that you received a replacement for a defective item we want to make sure you're completely satisfied with your product so this is pretty good because let's say you get a fully working shipped pc except there's something wrong with like the memory or the ssd or something like that something that's very easy to swap out yourself that is much more convenient than going through the hassle of reboxing up the entire pc shipping it over to them for however much shipping costs and for them to send it back with the working part them refunding the value of the item so that you can just go to amazon to buy a working one and to slap it in and then have you know the pc up and running ready to go that is way less downtime than the waiting for shipping back and forth the cost of shipping so I, this is good and in their about us section they are located in houston texas so uh yeah they're in houston if you're local to them you can visit them uh weekdays typical uh, business hours and closed on weekends so potentially some shipping savings if you are local to them so this is what they feel gives them their competitive edge so handcrafted gaming systems i mean for the most part everything is made by hand from all the other system integrators too there's not many companies building with robots yet at least not to my knowledge uh, stress tested system so this is good i mean i ran it through it's running through the stress test in the back right there but uh, i'll show or i would have shown on the screen that it should pass the rigorous test with no issues uh, quality checked so again i mean i didn't find anything that was out of place physically or on the like uh, software side of things bloatware free uh, so this was true safe and fast shipping so you have to talk about how they're based in texas uh allowing the fastest turnaround time which i mean they're right in the middle of the country so each coast that they go to i guess that is a a benefit to that lifetime support uh most of these system integrators have free uh lifetime support lifetime warranty versus lifetime support so i get the technical support part but the warranty that's actually with the the parts and labor themselves right comes with a us based lifetime labor and technical support warranty lifetime labor warranty i thought that in the other section talked about the warranty coverage for a period of three years for labor versus lifetime labor I, I feel like they're saying two different things on like that legalese page versus this front landing page which uh like sounds good and all so either make it more clear what the difference is or what a u.s based lifetime labor support is um but yeah, I feel like most people looking at these websites aren't looking into it this deep, but this is my job to look at it this deep uh, and to point things out that don't make sense to me or that could be misleading. So yeah, I mean, I feel like most people, more people would see this section than they would uh, this, you know, terms and conditions section with the actual warranty coverage. So uh, if there's anything that does contradict each other which it seems like this might because we're talking about workmanship for a period of three years for labor, uh, versus us-based lifetime labor and technical support warranty so you're putting lifetime labor in here if that means something else and i might just be understanding it wrong uh, maybe it could be rewritten now let's take a look at their pre-built gaming species so they have their best seller all models and limited edition series so let's just check out all models and let's sort by low to high so they do have systems coming in at nine hundred dollars so on the low end like nine hundred nine fifty right here uh and then we scroll all the way to the last page and they have systems all the way up to twenty three hundred dollars they don't go super crazy high end like three four thousand dollars like some system integrators and on the low end most system integrators don't do much cheaper than like the eight nine hundred dollar range any cheaper and it's not worth it because it doesn't make sense to do that on like a seven hundred dollar system because you're paying so much for the labor on lower cost parts but taking a look through the pricing here 
there is an interesting jump. So this is sorted from low to high. So you've got your 900, $950 systems here. And then it just jumps up to 1900. Where's all the like 14, $1,500 systems. We're looking at all, we clicked on all models and like if we go to in stock, we do the same thing. So like 950 to 1900, that's a huge jump. If we look at the out of stock stuff, just in case uh, it's not selected for whatever reason, it's the same thing. The, the price jumps from the not like under a thousand to almost two thousand dollars that's because this is not actually all their pcs that they have so if we go to prebo gaming pc look at their limited edition series and we do the same sorting low to high they do have systems uh that are in closer to like the 1500 right in the middle there so why these ones don't show up in all pcs is kind of strange to me like when when i look up all models i would kind of expect everything that they have i understand this is limited edition then this should say all models except for limited edition it's okay to have a limited edition series section where it shows all these for people who want you know the extra you know cute cases and cases with designs and are themed out but i think when you click all models it should actually have all models especially for what i pointed out there where the price point was such a huge leap like going from nine under a thousand to nineteen hundred dollars there there's so many customers who fit right in between that so just for like ui sake and usability i think the all models should have everything so that's my suggestion whether they implement it or not is up to them but i think that's a reasonable ask they definitely got some good looking systems uh you know they're they're paying attention to aesthetics using color matching things like that and uh the person that reached out to me part of like the pitch uh is that you know they're a company that is looking to kind of fill the void of like the lack of cute aesthetics in the pc a uh, pre-built pc market so that's why you know they've got some of these these themed cases with the cute cats and things like that so i mean i i guess i could see that i this to me this company stood out initially because when i went to check out the website i saw these builds if you don't look at these builds you know anything like this it it looks like any other uh, system integrator that exists out there but you don't see many of them kind of promoting as much of these like cute or what do you like I, not anime aesthetics but like kawaii cutesy themed bright vibrant colors you know oranges purples things like that i mean if that's what they're trying to do and leave their mark in the space uh and ch chase that niche I mean, I can see it working out. There are plenty of people who do want cutesy uh, gaming PCs. One thing I did notice while looking through all their builds, and I actually inquired about it, is uh, if you look at all the processors and the graphics cards, you'll see that everything is Intel. Intel, 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 Intel. No AMD and graphics cards are all NVIDIA. They said that based on their market research, they've seen that, especially on the places they sell, they don't only sell on their website. They also sell their whole systems on Amazon. And based on that, they said that these brands sell better. And I'm actually not going to argue with them about that because if we look at the Steam hardware survey, if we look at processor and video card usage by brand, and I know Steam hardware survey is not like the perfect source because not everybody gets the survey served to them. And some people with multiple systems can take it and stuff like that. But there's really not better publicly known information, especially gamer specific so if we take a look at both of these right we've got nvidia dominating you've got 77 versus 14 percent we're not even gonna talk about intel graphics cards but five times more users who took the survey anyway nvidia just straight up dominates the top of the chart i understand why they want to do that i would personally like to see them offer more amd cpu and graphics card offerings just just to see i think they'll sell decently well but you know, if if they're gonna just stick to these two brands, if it works for them, then I, I guess, you know, don't change what's not broken. Over on the processors, I mean, yeah, we're comparing Intel versus AMD, 67 versus 32%. As much as people, you know, love uh, AMD and are memeing on the 14th and 13th gen kind of disaster, the numbers are right here. But you do have to consider also that uh, a lot of 
gamers also aren't using the newest hardware. A lot of people are gaming on older systems, office PCs, server workstations, using Xeons, things like that. Those all kind of skew towards Intel, but it's not necessarily representative of most current one or two gen of parts. But yeah, that's what they had to say about it. I don't know if it's just because they're a smaller company and they just started out doing pre-built gaming PCs and they want to keep their SKUs uh, under control. But I think it would definitely be better to give people more choices. So I'm looking at the highest end offerings. We've got it sorted from uh, high to low and I'm noticing a trend here. Uh, basically all the systems have i9s in them, i9 13900KFs, and they max out at a 4070Ti. There are no more powerful graphics cards than that. And I'm noticing a similar trend too, anything with a 13700KF, it doesn't go any higher than a 4070. Like we can go back a page, uh, we've got more i7 13700KFs, and it maxes out at the 4070. Yeah, so... To me, that's a little bit odd. And I understand that there are use cases where people want a gaming PC, but they might also be doing other things that may require more cores and threads and, uh, you know, like a higher end CPU like the i9. So keep some of those options in there. But I also think that there should be some options that either match that i9 a little bit better, like maybe with a 4080 or 4080 Super, uh, or even some options where you knock down this i9 to an i7 and pair it with the 4070 Ti. The 13700KF can handle more than the 4070s that they're kind of maxing these out at on the builds that they're offering. If you know, you're going to be offering gaming PCs that are targeted more for gamers than anything, they're going to be playing titles that are newer AAA demanding games and they're going to want these higher end builds to be running at higher resolution you know at max or close to max out settings your graphics card is going to be the bottleneck an i7 13700kf can easily handle way more powerful graphics cards than a 4070 it can handle 4080 4080 super just fine at the settings that a lot of people are playing these games at when they are buying those graphics cards yeah you're gonna get way more performance out of upping your graphics card than a cpu so um, I, yeah, I think they could do a little bit of work with the way that they're pairing some of the parts at the high end. Uh, looking at the mid and low end, I think those were fine. The system that they sent over for me, we can start taking a look at right now. It's the Game Mail Pro, which is actually sold out right now. So I showed the specs on the screen earlier, but let's take a look at what the listing shows. The case, uh, the motherboard, the exact motherboard, which is nice. You don't always see that. Um, and then the... CPU cooler, which is, they should really put SiegelTep on here. This is a SiegelTep cooler, but they just put the Frozen 360. Like, just like the case says SiegelTep, I think they should put SiegelTep here. For the memory, they don't put any of the specs. They just list the capacity, which is the 2 by 16 32 gigs and the DDR5, but no speeds. I'm okay with them not putting the brand on there because most system integrators don't due to you know, they're, they're constantly changing supply. So they could be, if pricing for one vendor or a company is better, you know, one month or quarter than another, they can change that. But I think the speed should definitely be put on there. And I think when I looked at another PC, give me one second to bring it up. I think they do list it. Yeah, so here's the cheaper build, which we'll also take a look at. This one's the $900 one. They do list the speed on here. So, I mean, for consistency sake and just for more information for the buyer, I'd like to see the speed here. For the SSD, we do have a one terabyte M.2. Let me go back to the other listing. That's how they list it as well. So I'm okay with the brand not being put on there. They use the Crucial P3, which I think is fine, but it is a Gen 4 SSD. And I think putting that would actually help them in this case because people might think that they're just completely cheaping out and maybe even using a Gen 3 drive uh, so if you're going to be using Gen 4 drives on this one, put that. For the fans, they, again, they put the HQ12. It is SiegelTep fans. I think they should just put it. Uh, don't make me, you know, go to their, have to go to the products page and look up like, oh, is the HQ12? Oh yes, the HQ12 is SiegelTep. So yeah, just have it there so that there's less clicking around for the customer. For the wireless, okay, it's built-in Wi-Fi on the motherboard, Windows 11 Home. So we are missing power supply information on this page. So the power supply that they use in the system is the SiegelTep MU750G. So it's a gold-rated power supply and 
Uh, Seagull Tap does have power supplies on the PSU tier list, but not this model. I'm thinking this is either a newer one or there's a lot of power supplies missing on the PSU tier list. It's just because there's not enough testers out there for all the power supplies. This MU750G, they do have a lot of the information about it and including the topology which is the important part for a lot of the power supplies on the tier list especially in the speculative positions where there hasn't been testing done on it but just based on the internals you can kind of tell the quality of the power supply they do uh put the chroma testing information on here which i'm not super familiar with but for anyone who else who is and maybe more knowledgeable you can take a look at this so this is yeah pcie 5.0 compliant um and they do have the topology primary and secondary information on here with a shot of the internals so i think it's a matter of time until this power supply gets on the tier list and just based on what i see about it this is gonna strongly likely be a b tier power supply speculative of course until they test it we're not going to know for sure but just based on like topology and internals and just on the information that they do give here which a lot of power supplies uh you know all this information is not made really available i i think this is a strong b tier so i always like to do a price comparison between what system integrators sell their pcs for versus what you could build it for on pc part picker to see whatever that price difference is that's how much they're charging for their labor the warranty that they're providing in any customer service and troubleshooting so i do have this list right here which i've built to be as close to what next gen oem is offering seagull tap is surprisingly not on pc part picker at all there are some parts but they don't even have prices associated with them so for those just for the ease of viewing i picked parts that are pretty similar and match the price of what they're selling the same components for on the next gen oem website like this thermal right frozen prism it's a 360 aio that's 70 bucks and that's how much the seagull tap aio 360 is the graphics card they didn't have the arrow version anymore but they did have this asus dual one in white so i chose this and i did include the windows home retail so you can do the mental math on this yourself if you uh you know don't value the windows key i think it's kind of tough for system integrators because they can't just use those gray market OEM keys. I don't think it's a really fair comparison to expect system integrators to use like $15 gray market CD keys because I think that would actually be illegal. And they can only be used once before you change hardware and you have to buy a new key. Now I understand people are very budget conscious and want to save money and the majority of gamers out there or just PC users in general do not buy a $100 plus Windows CD key. I added it in here because they, I checked. You can check what kind of key it is. They are using a retail key, which means you can transfer that key no matter how many times you switch your hardware up and change it. That key will work infinite number of times. It doesn't bring value to the majority of people out there, unfortunately. And I don't know how much system integrators personally pay for retail keys. Hopefully they're not paying, uh, you know, anywhere close to $135 right here but i added it in here we can do the mental math to subtract that hundred ish dollars uh, if you're going to assume uh, a cheaper key is anywhere from like 15 20 or 30 bucks but looking at the total we do come out to 1700 dollars. so compared to building it yourself they are charging what looks to be about 300 dollars on their high-end system or 400 dollars if you take out the hundred ish dollar windows key that is definitely not the cheapest that i've seen i've seen companies go down to around 150 to 200 but this is also not the most expensive either i have seen uh companies charge upwards of 500 i would say this is kind of in the on the higher end and it's mainly due to that windows key when you take that off it makes it 400 dollars, which i think to a lot of buyers is not very attractive you have to consider that this is a company they have you know rent to pay electricity to keep the lights on employees to pay it's not the same as you building in your the basement of your house or your mom's house or something like that where uh, essentially there is no additional cost running a business costs money do keep in mind that i am just looking at what they have here and not the fact that 14th gen is out and 15th gen is around the corner you have to do this exercise at every point in time you're considering buying the system don't just watch this video and it's like a six months old video by the time you're watching it and just take it you know for what i'm saying here 
the pricing is always going to be changing so you got to do the same exercise yourself it doesn't take that long and determine if the value is good for you i'm just kind of showing you the steps that i take to determine the value and now let's take a look at their most affordable option the pioneer for 900 dollars so we've got an Intel i5 12400F, RTX 3060 Ti, 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply. Case is a SiegelTep Gremlin, 6, H610 motherboard. It's a SiegelTep cooler. And just from the picture, it looks uh, like a little bit nicer than a thermal right so because it's got the RGB on that top plate as well as the RGB fan. But it looks like a standard, uh, you know, four to six heat pipe air cooler, tower cooler. Uh, and then we have the memory again, which they do list out the speed, which is good. I'm okay with it, not having the brand. SSD, would like to see if this is a Gen 3 or a Gen 4 SSD, but you've got a half terabyte here. We've got some SiegelTep. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, SiegelTep, they list the fans out as the SiegelTep. And for here, they don't, even though it's the same. It's not the exact same fans because it's the HQ12 Pros in white. But this one is the HQ12 Pro Meows, the orange one specifically. It's just these small consistency things. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Operating system, Windows 11 again, uh, warranty. So yeah, I mean, this is a nice looking build. And looking at the PC part picker list for this build, uh, I've pretty much done the same thing where any of the Seagotep parts that for whatever reason didn't show up on Amazon, I chose something that is pretty equivalent price and you know, performance wise in the same tier, like cooler that I chose for 40 bucks. And you can see that it is a little bit nicer than the typical thermal right ones. It does have the RGB uh, plate on top as well as this has six heat pipes. So it's, it costs more. Um, you could definitely find a six heat pipe thermal right one with an RGB fan for probably like 25 or 30 bucks. I'm just putting as equivalent as I can to what they have. And that's one of the things with buying from system integrators is you're kind of locked in, especially these pre-builds. Sometimes they might use parts that aren't the most bang for buck value, like uh, like their cooler that you know they're saying is worth uh, 40 bucks. We know that Thermalrite has very similar performing coolers for 15-ish dollars less. So, um, I mean, I'm not gonna knock them for that, that though. This, pretty much every system integrator does this. You can go to any system integrator out there look at some of their pre-builds and say oh yes i could use a cheaper motherboard a cheaper power supply a cheaper case so again not a knock to them just something for you as like a consumer or someone trying to learn from this uh keep that in mind uh but i've matched everything as much as i can like for the ssd uh, i just threw in a half terabyte like budget drive it's a team group mp33 it is a gen 3 drive so it's a little bit cheaper i don't know if they're using a gen 4 drive uh it would help their case out because they're using a more expensive one. Uh, and then I just put in a, you know, 3060 Ti, the Zotac one that they showed in this picture. Uh, th that's like 400 bucks, which is not worth it. And it's because the 30 series is starting to kind of be phased out. So um, the prices on them on places like Newegg and Amazon eventually are gonna be really bad as third party sellers become the only ones who are selling them and they never sell it for msrp or close to it they always get some stupid marked up price but uh, i did find one that was 320 which was more on the reasonable side so i put it on here and uh, for the case uh again this case goes for 60 bucks on uh, next gen oem's website so i chose a white 60 dollar case with three rgb fans um and their power supply i messed up on this one i think let me see so let me change this out there we go. So for the power supply, I just chose whatever was 50 bucks because the SiegelTep, uh, I'm assuming they're gonna be using the GM just based on the picture. That is the GM650 gold model that goes for 50 bucks on Amazon. I also have the windows in here again at 134, but if we look at the total, um, if we do value windows at that ridiculous price, then their build fee is very reasonable here. Surprisingly reasonable. Uh, coming in only at 860 so that's a $40 build fee but we take out the windows key let's say minus like $100 then it becomes around $140 $150 build fee which I think for a $900 system I think that that is totally reasonable so yeah just depending on how you look at that windows key even in worst case scenario taking this out and putting in like a 15 dollar key it's still a very reasonable build fee 
for a system that is this low in price. So I, I think they're actually, they must be selling quite a bit of these systems because uh, this is pretty competitive. All right, I think I'm good with checking out their website and doing the price comparison. So let's get back over to the PC and wrap this video up. So here are my closing thoughts on next gen OEM. We'll start with the positives. Regarding the physical PC itself, the quality of workmanship is good. There were no screws left unturned, cable management was clean, everything was plugged into the right spots, fans were facing the right direction, uh, BIOS was updated for the microcode, no bloatware in Windows, etc, etc. You know, all the pretty standard stuff. And to be honest, there's not a lot of things that you can really do in this department to like go above and beyond. But on the flip side, there are a lot of things that you can do wrong and get docked points. And, you know, I didn't see any of that here. So that's a good thing. I did consider whether or not this could be a cherry picked sample or if it's actually representative for the rest of their builds. And that's something that you can't really perfectly gauge, even if you do a secret shopper style video, because outliers do exist. And a company can have, you know, a thousand builds. And if one of those come out subpar, it's not representative that all of their builds are bad. They can have 999 perfect ones and have one bad one that ends up on a secret shopper. And now, uh, you know, everybody thinks that their builds suck when that's totally not the case at all. No company has a 100% track record, not even the best ones. So to that, I will say, you know, this video now exists forever on the internet with their name attached to it and with the build quality that has been shown. So it'd be in their best interest to keep up with the quality of their builds to this level. Putting out anything noticeably lower quality is gonna essentially be shooting themselves in the foot and hurt their reputation in the long run if people do see a discrepancy when they buy their system and if they do the research and come across this. Uh, and see that there is a big difference. But yeah, that's just something I wanted to bring up because I know that's probably the first thing that people think of for a video like this. Don't worry, I think of it too. Hopefully what I just said is gonna keep them accountable if they weren't already. But also on the side of positive things, you know, while the cute aesthetic for a build like this isn't for me, I know plenty of people who would love something like this and this style of a PC, and there's definitely a market for it. So, you know, if that's what they wanna do to make themselves stand out, uh, then I think that's great that they're serving that segment of the market. And it's not like they're not providing, you know, more conventional looking builds. They're doing that as well. Another positive for me is that I do like that they're using power supplies that on paper are higher quality than some of the mystery stuff out there that companies use to cut corners. I do want to see the specific models added to each of their listings to make that more clear. And as far as pricing goes, uh, this is a positive and we're going to transition into some of the things I think they can improve on. So. I think their pricing is fair. Sure, you're gonna have some other companies that might be a little cheaper and you're gonna have some that might be a little more expensive. But overall, you can kind of just tell by looking at the price and specs. Uh, and to me, their systems don't scream outrageous or rip off. On the low end system, the pricing was good. The cost on top of the parts was very fair and very competitive. Uh, but at the high end, uh, like with this Meow Pro, they work out to be around $400 over the cost of physical parts, $300 over if you also include the OS in there. But again, I don't think many people value Windows at $100, even if it is a retail key. Uh, so you kind of have to take that into consideration. It's not the most ridiculous build fee I've seen, but it's definitely not the most competitive either. And to address that, they can do a couple of things. Uh, one, they can lower the price a little bit. Or two, they can offer a little bit more for the same price. Like for this build at $2,000, I kind of hope to see at least a two terabyte SSD in there. Two terabytes are what, like around a hundred bucks? A hundred dollars is 5% of a $2,000 system. I think that can be managed all while keeping the same price. Uh, that brings more value to the customers and I still think they should be making a decent profit at the end of the day. Speaking on other things that I think can be improved, I'd like to see more options in terms of, you know, carrying AMD CPUs and graphics cards. I don't know of any other company out there that strictly sticks to only Intel and NVIDIA from like big to medium to even the super small system integrators. Most of them have options spanning all three of the companies. Another improvement I'd like to see would also be to fill in those gaps between that like $950 to $1,450 systems that they have in their lineup. That's a $500 gap. There's a lot of configurations that can fit between there. Just add a couple. You know, this is pretty easy to do too because you can just take a lot of an existing option like the $950 build and just choose like a graphics card that's $100 or $200 more or like up that SSD from a 512 to a one terabyte. 
you know, do that and boom, you've just filled out your $1,200 segment. The last thing I do want to hit on are the smaller points that I did mention earlier regarding the website. Just adding the more information like the RAM speeds, power supply model, uh, just include that kind of stuff. It may seem minor, but it's that kind of stuff that can make a difference when your competitor spells it out and you don't. Listing these things out should be the standard, not the exception. And if you're not at least meeting the standard, you can potentially lose out on some sales. But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video though. I've been talking and giving my thoughts for long enough. Now it's time to hear from you all. Let me know down in the comments, what are some of the most important things to you when you look at a system integrator for a pre-built PC? Even if it's not for yourself because you're you know, all almighty and can build your own, but if you were to recommend it to someone, whether it be family or friend or a stranger on the internet that have made the firm decision to get a pre-built, what are you looking for? For me, price to performance is king, followed by customer service and warranty, and then any extras like aesthetics or uniqueness of the builds. Uh, that kind of comes last, but that's just my personal preferences. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts and your priorities. Also sound off in the comments if any of you out there have heard of Next Gen OEM before seeing this video. I'm very curious because yeah, I had not heard of them before they reached out to me. If you found this video because you were considering one of their builds and you found this while you're doing your research, let me know as well. I have a feeling over time, there's gonna be more and more of those comments because they are a relatively newer company. Whatever comments you guys leave, they're not gonna be just for me either because I'm sure Next Gen OEM is gonna be watching this video for my feedback, as well as checking out the comments and reading what y'all have to say as well. That's gonna be it for me though. I wanna thank you all as always for watching and for continuing to support the channel. I want to thank the channel members, as always, for their above and beyond support. Uh, as always, be safe out there, and I'll see you all down in the comments, as well as the next stream and or video. Bye.